I'm back. We're going to focus on Malkador for a bit and then back to Anon. Meanwhile, deep in the Imperial Palace, in a vaulted room, kept in a near perfect darkness and protected by arcane wards, an old man preps candles. The room slowly lights up as he circles the area. The Sigilite finishes his task and moves to a runic ward with a table in the centre. As he reaches out for the deck of cards, a figure appears across the table. Malkador ignores his master's projection and continues to shuffle the cards. The Emperor projection is sombre. He and his friends have played this game many times, but this will be the first time since the full card changed from a blank card to a visage of his cupbearer, Anon. Malkador places the set and roles were played. Emps chooses the Angel as Warmaster, as was Anon's suggestion. As always, the Warmaster falls. As Malkador continues the play, the Emperor orders him to stop and restart. This repeats itself as he chooses a different Warmaster each time. Malkador grows colder with each round. Ooh, now this is interesting, guys. This is, is going like getting into it. No change. No matter which of his master's sons, the Warmaster always falls to chaos. Malkador narrows his eyes. Since Anon graced the full card, Malkador's card now survives each time, even as his master remains bound to the Golden Throne. The stagnation is drastically lessened, but still a march to ruin. Each playthrough leads to the full breaking as he desperately tries to replace Malkador's role as he finally succumbs to age. They play through the last of the Primarch's path. Mal goes to pack up the cards. No, we have another round to play. Confused, Malkador still does as asked. When the choice of Warmaster comes, his master chooses the fill, and the card catches fire. Interesting. The Emperor vanishes, no doubt to think on the new rounds. Malkador puts each candle out and leaves the room. He moves through the lower levels of the palace back up to his study. Legos is waiting for him. Legos, I see you're well. How fair are the others? Two of my brothers had to be put down. Far less than what we were expecting. Anon's cautions prevented the worst. The custodian and the sigilite discussed the threat that was removed, only to be interrupted by more custodies with a certain prisoner in tow. Ah, Sava, we have much to discuss. Back to Anon. Emp sent me out to lead a splinter fleet that was being tasked to bring a sector into the fold. It was rather tame, mostly feudal worlds with the odd civil world here and there. Most were happy to see us. A few worlds attacked our diplomats and were punished harshly. One king challenged me to a duel. Had me face his best knight in single combat. No guns. Good thing my digi weapon is not a gun. <laughs> I didn't leave the poor guy to burn, and quickly mercy killed him. The king was kind of miffed that I cheated, but held to his honour. One of Razit's officers is staying behind to settle down with the king's heiress. We moved on, crushed one world that refused to call and rejoin the fold. We limited damage to the civvies, as they were clearly being forced to fight us. As in, literal slave callers. Once we took down the tar network, keeping the callers working, the leaders got Order 66 by their slaves. We left behind the Imperial Fist attachment we had with us, as this world needs it more than us right now. I have directed several worlds to prep food aid to be shipped to help. It felt really good to put those fuckers down. I oversaw some basic charters, mostly sticking basics. I made one civil world the sector capital, mostly because they actually had a starport and a history of peaceful trade in the area. We headed back to the main fleet which was currently beating the fuck out of a minor orc empire. Emps was chilling watching an orc world be bomb cleaned. I joined him, offered him a drink and sat in a nice chair. He accepted the glass, but was focused on the world below us. The floor in his deck was a see-through crystal. Looked like we were standing in the void over the world. Eventually Emps downed the glass, and we discussed the sector I brought into the fold. We were closing in on the Interrex and Horus, who was working out a deal with him. A nomad fleet had entered the talks as well. A group of humans and allied Xenos. I will admit, I did not trust the Xenos. I knew what kind of galaxy I was in. The aliens of the Interrex and this nomad fleet had long histories of working peacefully with humans, but it put me on edge, like I was open to a knife to the back. This planet was a trash heap. I was with Emps, planet side as Imperial forces hunted the orc holdouts. The Greenskins had dug in and dug in hard. The mortal forces had this well in hand. As we cleansed each area, we would build fold fasts and clear areas for landing zones. Most of my work here was approving base layouts and settling tensions from the Imperial Diverse Forces and overseeing the mass burning of orcoid bodies. Like, you gotta do it, you know. Fungus spreads rapidly. <laughs> the last orc holdouts on this world are being finished off. This world is suckish now. 
but it is a nice location for connecting several sectors together. Because of this, we are going to leave behind a crack team to build this world up. This world will one day be rich from trade and will be a keystone for the Imperium in this region. Truly some good work. Angron sent word to us. The craft world that sent me an envoy have formally formed a coalition. Well, more like they agreed to agree to a coalition. The Eldar have approached Angron's warhounds to evacuate a maiden world with human colonists that have agreed to leave. Angron is asking Imps and I how to proceed. I'm at a loss. The idea that the Eldar would properly organise and send a proper diplomatic team to deal with such an issue confused me. I know the Eldar could be diplomatic, but they were always underhanded. This was them forming a possible long-term collective of craft worlds and trying to keep the Imperium peaceful. I will just have to trust Emps on this. Emps agreed to the Eldar's request. Angron was tasked with overseeing the worlds, two million colonists relocated to three frontier worlds. In return, the Eldar have agreed to help defend those three frontier worlds and agreed to further talks with the Imperium once they formalised their coalition. We went about our tasks of running the fleet. I had to put down a riot on one ship when two regiments started arguing. It started with heckling, then yelling matches during meals, then fist fights in the halls to fill on brawls between regiments. I had the general in charge of overseeing those regiments reprimanded and had each regiment reassigned to different ships. I had marks added to each CO's records and had one trooper flogged. Fucker threw some fruit at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. I finished dealing with the bullshit and settled some matters with my scribes and staff. My suite called me. The siren of sleep called. As I approached my room, I noticed something off. I signaled my custody guards to send word to the sunny dogs. One of the custodies go in first, then waves me in. I do in fact have visitors. Conrad and some night lord captain I don't know. Conrad came by to pass a warning. The cabal is gunning for me. I kind of guessed that. The latest cabal agents Conrad faced had files on me that were strange. They knew I was a reincarnate from terror, but they somehow found a bunch of old videos and thought I was the generic protag from <laughs> Ezekiel. Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean. <laughs> I thought these guys were meant to be smart. They also showed me some videos of some new Xenos they fought. Fuckers looked like mini Cthulhu clones. That was worrying. Also had what looked like herd with them. The 8th were pretty sure they were scouts of some kind. Conrad did not take my answers well and stormed out to speak with his father. I chatted with the captain for a bit. After a bit, I explained I need to sleep and offered to talk later. I woke later to a maid tasked to get me for a meeting. I splashed my face with some water and ate a ration bar as I walked. Tasted better than I thought it would, but still tasted of steel caramel. Emps was in the meeting hall early. Joked about getting me a katana to play up with the Cabal's mistaken intel. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled my eyes at him. How does Emps know about anime? Oh, come on, you know finally like, the Anon is play. No, well, the, uh, the Emperor's been alive since, what, 8000 BC in, like, universe, so, like, you know... Do you think Emps had manga? Do you reckon he did? Do you think he had manga? I don't know. Do you know, think I, he watched Jojo? I think the Ems. Oh, 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 oh my God! He did. He watched Jojo. And he, oh Joe. my God! No! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's where he got the space wing idea from. <laughs> I rolled my eyes at him. We chatted about nonsense in English as the rest of the leaders of the fleet filtered in. We switched to Gothic as more people arrived. Ems went over most topics fairly quickly. Conrad was tagged in to discuss the new Xenos and new measures regarding mental effects. A few officers are being sent to integrate a pocket empire that approached the Imperium for annexing. Smart, they will get a much better deal that way. Afterward, Conrad and Emps joined me for a quick meal. After a nice meal, Conrad leaves to hunt more Cabal agents. Nice lad. Emps and I are going over some basic plans for after he deals with the Interax. Looks like he wants me to get Sad Boy Pert. What? Pert Pert Lab. I can never say his fucking name. I can never say his name. Like the guy mark of the Iron Fists, isn't it? Sad Boy? Yeah. No, sorry, not Iron Fists. It's Iron Warriors, isn't it? Oops, looking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know how it is. I think I can handle that. The thing that really stands out is Magnus is going to be tasked with searching near the Halo Stars for Alpharius and Omegon. That's a yee. <laughs> That's yee. Omegon. Omegon. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a headache. Poor Magnus. I spent the rest of the trip helping with more translating records. We were greeted by a waiting Luna Wolf force alongside a few Interax ships. The Interax had about 40-ish worlds, 
Their ships were rather civilian looking. They were dwarfed by the Imperial ships. The world we were taken to was really great though. They had actual arcologies, not the hives I was used to seeing. The world had 40 billion humans and 12 billion Xenos living, but the environment looked better than Earth in my time. The capital threw us a warm welcome. Massive parades and crowds of humans and Xenos cheering us on. Abby, the not yet armless. Sorry, what? Yeah, he's got two like cyber, cyber arms. Oh, right, okay. Abby, the not yet armless, greeted us and brought us to Horus. After Horus greeted us, Abaddon and I chatted while Emps and Sun caught up. Abby is a charming guy. After that, meetings began. We met with the Interrex diplomats. I mostly shut the fuck up. It was already mostly handled by Horus by this point. We were just here to finalise and sign treaties. The terms were simple. 1. The Interrex and their civilians, humans and Xenos, would be protected by the Imperium. 2. The Imperium and the Mechanicum would be granted access to the Interrex STC archives. 3. The Interrex would be allowed self-rule as long as they followed the ban on AI and allowed the black ships to do their duty. There was more, but that was the simple version. That sounds pretty fair to me, to be honest yeah. with you. That's not a bad going. We met with the Nomad fleet next. They wanted to settle a series of worlds and wanted protection. Emps allowed this, on certain conditions. The Xenos allies would be left alone, but restricted to the sector they would be forming with the Nomad humans. They also had stockpiles of special materials and minerals that were rare as fuck. Those were to be handed over. Meetings with both the Nomads and the Interrex went on for a while. Emps has decided to oversee the STC archive data transfer personally. I was being sent off with Luna Wolves, Emperor's Children and Ultramarines Detachment. Abaddon was leading the Luna Wolves group. I would also get some Night Lords later. My new flagship would be a newly refurbished Gloriana class that I would get the name. And I had the perfect name. Oh god, oh god. Is this is gonna be bad. I was planet side eating at a local cafe. I could see the massive ship in low orbit with my unassisted eyes. It was still being prepped and its name was still a series of numbers. I eat my food and enjoyed the sight. Several passersby were awestruck by the sheer size of the ship. Ah, Emp's flagships was even bigger. A Gloriana class is just about 20 kilometers long. Emp's ship was well over 30 kilometers. In a few hours, I would be granted a tour of my new digs, the Ally of Justice. Oh, that's not too bad. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I, I thought like it was going to be something whack. I thought it'd be like, <laughs> meet this gawk, meet this beast or some <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list and it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking. So once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. Anon, your fleet has been delayed. I pause from my meal. Emps and I are eating at a very nice establishment. Horus and his current Mournival are eating with us. Good news or bad news? I asked. He chuckles. The first. I have confirmed the lion's status. Caliban should be cleansed any day now. I want to rally the First Legion's main elements to your fleet and detour to reunite them with their father. I whistle. Damn, the First Legion is huge at this point. Well over 230,000 Astartes. This would put me in charge of the largest fleet outside of the Sol home fleet. We returned to our meal. Horus told me about some grey look-alike species while I finished my meal. I was chilling in my room in the new Imperial Embassy. I was trying to just relax and pleasure read before I was swamped in fleet paperwork and politics. Problem was, the Interrex elite kept trying to invite me to such and such or get me to listen to some political spiel. I tried not to be an ass, but I was quickly reaching my social limits. Seemed like every socialite and bachelor wanted to be my friend. Like, come on here. If there's one way to get, like, into the Emperor's ear. Yeah. Like, you know, that's not, like, a weird superhuman warrior that's fucking, like... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you're not going to be make, make friends with many space feelings. Let's be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Seems Horus and Imperial Media really have talked me up. Even with my history of xenocide. I was well-liked by the Interrex population. 
Seems like they like high and normy human like me has risen so far. Same. (laughs) 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 Still was really killing my already strained free time. Damn it, I just want to read something fun for once. Emps talked me into attending an Indirex talk show. Well, more like Emps told me I was booked. I whined, then Horace and boys hauled me off. Horace and I entered from backstage and greeted the weird host. Lady had green hair made to look like a nest of eyes. Horace was in a very nice suit, even if he still wore beast hide over his shoulders. (laughs) I was wearing a toga with a red sash. I looked retarded. Thank you both for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to be back, Shavi. Shavi? Shavi, yeah. Yeah, we'll go Shavi. Horace has been on our show twice before now. I give a short bow. Glad I could join you. I lean on my training and try and appear chill and charming. We sat on a weird couch across from the hostess. She had a hover chair. Horace, how's it been? Spending some time with your dear dad lately? Yeah, we just had a lovely dinner last night. I showed him and Anna on some of your local dishes. It was quite good. I speak up a bit. Their food was great. And you and on, I heard a lot about you. Really now? Yeah. We've heard you went from pre-electricity planet to being the Emperor's cupbearer overnight. Must have made quite the first impression. I laughed at the memory. (laughs) You could say that. Care to share the details? It was just simple, really. He's an extremely high-level psyker, and I have studied things he wanted to know more of. It grew from there. I used the utmost of my bullshit training to weave a bit of the truth into my story. And just what would a sick son of a juke on a, forgive me, a backwater world possibly know that would interest an emperor of an interstellar power? That's classified. I give my biggest shit-eating grin. Some smartass had a laugh track. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds sketchy. That sounds sketchy. I think this is going to end up in hot water. Yeah. You know, asking questions like that and then he can't actually... Answer? Mmm, that's not good. Because there's a lot of people, like, you know, earlier on in the story, they were saying, like, oh, yeah, he's, like, you know, he's hypnotized the emperor or some shit. Yeah. Mm. The rest of the show was mostly fluff and bullshit questions. Horace later told me he had basically given the studio a script to stick to. We had a meet and greet with some elites and a few common people that had won tickets to the show's event. One kid straight up asked Horace if he could be a space marine. Horace actually agreed to test the kid if his parents agreed. The dad was honoured, but the boy's mom looked horrified. Yeah, I don't think I'd want my child turned into a space <laughs> no. wing. I had plans to see a few sites afterwards, and asked Horace if he would like to join me. He had a meeting soon, but would catch up with me afterwards. It was late, but I was boarding in the early morning, so I could sleep later on the Ally of Justice. I saw a few monuments, took some pictures with people I met in the street. Razitz got sick from street vendor food. You got wee flu. <laughs> <laughs> Horace met up with us for a theatre show A classic local comedy It was nice Billy Madison or something uh, I imagine <laughs> I was getting ready to board the shuttle to my ship When Emps visited me to see me off He was in a far more casual form He looked like an old man The staffers didn't even notice him Mate he's like 12 foot tall <laughs> Had you not noticed a 12 foot tall man <laughs> I waved the show I saw him We walked to a more private area to chat Ready to head back off on your own? <laughs> I will hardly be alone. I just need to play the middleman and let brighter minds hold the reins. That and try and lighten our paperwork load. You know very well. I would just let you act the figurehead. You don't give yourself enough credit and all. He places his hand on my shoulder. It's kind of strange to see the Emperor like this. I'm slightly taller than him right now. Oh, well, there you go then. He's not actually in his 12 foot tall form. form. You have really taken my call to action seriously. It has really brightened my days. I could hardly do elsewise. How would I live with myself? He smiles. Most seek only power. Others be damned. Few reach for the greater good. Or can even see it. I chuckle at the greater good bit. Reminded me of the Tao. Emps clearly reads my thoughts. Are they worth the effort to uplift? Right now? No. Maybe someday. If we don't wipe them out. We mostly chilled with some chest and talked till my shuttle landed and was loaded. We wished each other well, and I headed off. I settled into my suite on board the Ally of Justice. I had the same space as a damn manor here. After I settled down and rang up the ship's officers, I asked when would be a good time to meet. 
They would be busy for now while we prepared to jump, but I wanted to let them know I wasn't avoiding them. I'm the kind of guy that could go weeks without talking and be fine, but my role demanded I be social. Gotta step it up. Razitz, Abaddon and I eat lunch together. Note to self, try and meet more of the Luna Wolves I have with me. The plan was to meet up with the elements of the First Legion as we went. Take some planets as we headed to Caliban. Pick up the lion and set Caliban under the First Legion's direct rule. Then go find Pert and stop him from being salty all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Should <Yeah>. be fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not into Pert Lapo at all. He's not a, he's not a Primarch that I find interesting. No. I what me that top, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. After we were mid jump, I called a general meeting for the fleet leadership. I made another council style board that went over the fleet's needs. It had served me well so far. The first few meetings I mostly spent explaining how the council worked. Most imperial fleets were very top down focused. After that I actually found myself bored. My scribes for the Emperor's fleet had taken over most of the translating jobs. I had already finished my portion before I was assigned this fleet. Guess I better find a hobby. Our first stop was a barren system. Only had random chunks of ice and rock orbiting a dwarf star. We waited a week for another fleet that was joining us. We passed around supplies between ships and jumped. Things went smoothly until we had to deal with some dumb fuckery. A trooper got lynched. He was some chad type sleeping with any willing lady. Some chad type. <laughs> His last hookup was another tripper's wife. Ooh, that's going to end badly for anyone. The cuckolded tripper and his new friends threw the man whore out of the airlock, mid-warp. Ooh, that's a horrible death. The area of that ship is now cursed. You can literally hear the poor guy's screams when the lights are off. One of the friends turned himself and his fellows in. He told us they were only going to rough him up, not throw the offender into the warp. The cuckolded tripper was shot by firing squad for murder. His friends were assigned to penal regiments. I may as well be a death sentence, let's be yeah. serious. The wife that cheated on the tripper just joined one of the officers' harm. This was fucking stupid. Things calmed back down a bit. We find a habitable world, not on our charts. We had it added and set up a few settlements. The planet was a colder world, massive ice caps, lots of Falkland type islands. A few regiments from Ice World were happy for the land grant. I named the world Fuel and we moved on. We came across a stranded ship in one system. The ship had to throw their warp engine into the star as it started to fail. The ship had been stuck in this system for over two years. They'd set up an actual farm on their ship. One of the crew had experience on treating soil and had basically saved their asses. The gal literally saved a crew of 20,000 people. We took them with us. A delay held us back. A pocket empire of beast folk. They had conquered their planet some time back and wiped out the remaining humans. They had managed to get ships from an old federation vault and were ethnic cleansing the human world in this sector. Six human worlds were occupied and the local humans being worked to death in camps. We hit them like a hammer. We had several beast folk detected before fighting even broke out. Seems that the current beast folk leadership was unpopular. Once we had the area under control, we exiled the defectors to a frontier world. The rest of the beast folk were wiped out. That's actually a pretty good deal. <laughs> like that's genuinely nice of them for the um, uh, for the Imperium. That is anyway. <laughs> Rebuilding the sector took a while. We started having First Legion elements joining us over time. While rebuilding an agri world just called 3GK, I was asked by the PG if I could relocate some of his people. The world was just not able to house them all right now, as most of the habitats were scrap heaps. I agreed, of course. When the refugees arrived in the fleet, I was stunned. Turns out the PG was from a reform faction that iced the nobles and let the world get conquered. The refugees were not farm staff that knew how to settle a world, but nobles. Their families and harms that have never worked a day in their life. They had hidden bunkers while their people were butchered. What was I going to do with a bunch of posh gits in their bed warmers? I had every exile tested for skills and assigned quarters. Several complained I was mistreating them. I told them if they didn't work, they would not eat. Many of the harm girls quickly find new patrons. Asked to work for me, I gave them maid jobs. The children of the exiles were given classes. If the end of this series doesn't end with Cupbearer getting his hole, I'll be so sad. I think he has got no, his he hole. Hasn't. Has he not no, still? No, I'm pretty sure they dragged him off to a whorehouse at one point. Yeah, but he didn't do anything. Yeah, Cupbearer deserves a bit of sex at this point. <laughs> Things were calm for a while, but busy. I oversaw a lot of settlement rebuilding. 
integrating local structures into imperial standards. My new maids kept causing issues with my old staff. One maid didn't take no for an answer and tried to blackmail me into taking her to bed. One of the custodies cut her down right there. That caused me even more paperwork. The maid's death was pretty dumb, but it stopped a lot of the bullshit. Her blackmail wasn't even that bad. Just her threatening to spread rumours of me being a eunuch. Honestly, though, you're getting on like you're it. Getting though. On, like a you're getting, you're getting on. Like, you know, that's just. <laughs> people will start asking questions if you turn it down that often. <laughs> it was hardly going to make me want to sleep with her more. I also didn't care if people thought I was a eunuch. I mostly ignore the issue till it died down. With the sector mostly rebuilt, we headed out. Most of what we passed was empty space. Not actual void, just systems of rubble. Things calmed down in the fleet. I joined with the Astartes elements for a feast and interlegion games. Abby even kicked my ass in a bite. Thankfully he went easy on me so nothing broke. I even got them to play tug of war with chains. They really got into that. We came across a jungle world. It had very large predators hunting megafauna. We of course used it as a hunting retreat. Army and legion teams hunted their fill and we stocked up on our meat supply. I overheard a tripper Trevik say the world was a steakhouse. So I formally named the planet Trevix Steakhouse. Honestly, <laughs> that's what it would end up turning into for me. Yeah. If I was put in this situation, eventually the planets are going to get silly names. <laughs> yeah. Eventually it's going to happen. Eventually yes. it's going to like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a Gobby McGob over there. Or, you know what I mean? Like the Booty McBoot Face or... <laughs> planet McPlanet Face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, I planet find... McRound Body. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got spooked a bit. I was approached by a watcher in the dark while minding my own business. I have no idea how I got on ship mid-warp, and I don't want to know. It asked me to delay my fleet a few days, warning that something was trying to ambush us soon. I thanked it for the warning, and called a crisis meeting. I'm always interested in them watchers, they're really interested in part of 40k lore, but there's really nothing about them. If, there's, if you guys have any got, like you know, any sources where you can actually read about them, let us know, because they're an interest in Xenos faction that the really has nothing to know about. My council decided to hold up around an ice world we stopped at. We told the crews we were stocking up on water and taking tally of stores. Fairly standard stuff. Two weeks later, I was contacted again. This time by two watchers. that informed me they had handled the threat. I had no idea what to think about this. After a few jumps, we stopped at a system littered with derelict Xenos ships. The tech boys couldn't find anything to identify them. I called off the searches and we headed out. Abaddon didn't take this well and insisted I have at least a squad of marines with me at all times. Honestly, that's not a bad idea. Let's be serious. Legos is in the bait. Yeah. You guys like, should have something. As we scouted out a garden world we find, shit went down. I was planet side after a week of army forces scouting the world. I had a company of Luna Wolves, the Sunny Dogs, and my two custodies. I was checking out a ruin with murals. Looked like human made it. Maybe a lost colony that dwindled? We hadn't contacted any people here, but they could have easily regressed to tribal levels and we just haven't found them yet. I was voxing for a team of scribes to record everything when it happened. I heard a mental scream, weapons fire and something jumped out from the shadows in the corner. My custodies cut down whatever the fuck that mass of tentacles was, but was rushed in evac. We fought our way to the landing field, but as we left the runes, the beast just faded from reality. It was clearly fuckery, so I ordered the ruins shelled from orbit. As everyone was being checked, we had to mercy kill two sunny dogs. They reported headaches, and we find something in their heads. Several more turned themselves in for checkups, but came clean. Still spooked the shit out of us. We marked this world for sensor and moved on. Yeah, it's just gonna get glassed, let's be serious. Yep. One of my new maids asked to be reassigned. I asked why. She was one of the new maids that had not caused issue. She said she didn't actually want to work, but be arm candy and a bed warmer. She thought I just had a maid fetish, and now wanted to find a patron as I clearly wasn't interested. <laughs> I wished her well and she moved in with one of the ship's officers. They each their own. Honestly, this guy. <laughs> Wait, like, come on here, you tell me after a long day. Get your you dick wet. Are you just saying like, oh, you know what, you know, I'm, I've been having a really busy day, fancy just giving us a wee wank. <laughs> You know, like, just, just, just give us a wee chuff. Like, you know, just something to sort of say after a long day. <laughs> you know, like, anything, maybe? My council was dealing with day-to-day -day tasks when we got an odd request from some menials. Seems like they wanted separate habitats for men and women. Why? We sent teams to investigate the strange request. 
Turns out an imperial cult had taken my lack of love life as a sign from the emperor. They were preaching that I was a saint and the sexes should remain isolated unless for procreating. What the actual fuck? I'm just socially awkward. <laughs> How did they even reach that conclusion? <laughs> Mate, <laughs> like, sounds like celibacy to me. I know, I know. We broke up the imperial cult and posted flyers detailing why the cult was disbanded and wrong. Also, why I wasn't a saint. It was weird finding all the religious art of me in imps. They had at least made me look like a badass in the art. One shrine had imps and I looking a little too passionately Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. <laughs> Some very, like, Michelangelo-esque artwork, I imagine. <laughs> I had the head priest of the cult brought to me. Guy was big. Was a bodybuilder during his free time before converting. Guy literally tried to kiss my boots when the guards brought him in. I tried to reason with him. He started ranting about women being the source of all human weakness and other nonsense. Oh my god, he's from fucking K. He's from fucking K. Oh my god, it is. As my guards dragged him away, he started praising my bromance for the Emperor. I needed a drink after dealing with this Lin. Razitz broke out his personal stash. I woke up in my study. I was on the ground and was shirtless. My desk was upside down and the sword first made me stuck in a leg of a desk. What happened last night? I mixed a herbal drink from my stash. It really helped with my hangover. Damn, Razit, what did you give me? As I walked out to the rest of my suite and noticed the mess. Butlers, maids, scribes and sunny dogs were passed out everywhere. Good mad party. I started waking people up. We had a mess to clean up. How much is the damage going to cost? I asked with dread covering my face with my hands in shame. The scribe looked abashed. Around two and a half million credits, as well as reassigning some staff to do the awkwardness. Dear God, sorry, my bad. By the Imperium, what have we done? This got really out of hand. Half my staff were on leave from injury. What? The fuck? <laughs> what the fuck happened? Fighting pets? Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like many of my maids would need another type of leave soon. Maternity, oh god. Oh, for fuck's this sake. This was insane. I had Razit's stash seized. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit, <chippy. laughs> He was actually okay with that. We both think someone spiked his liquor. Yeah, okay, Razit. Sure. Yeah, okay, sure. Razit. Sure thing. Joke's on you. I'm into this shit. <laughs> <laughs> his liquor was just expired. It had aged into super booze. How does that even work? Razit blames me. Says it was me not taking a harm as the cause of all this. I threw a book at him. <laughs> So guys, that is the entire thread. Um, it big wasn't long one for you. Big boys. long one for you guys. We were halfway through this, and then we and then we at, scrolled down. It's like there's not, not actually much left. I says we may as well give them it all. Yeah, exactly. So, I'd rather. You all. Well, <laughs> so we're up to speed with everything. We do need to wait for an on to like more. Yeah. But look, but as you, you know, as soon as it comes out, we'll have it within a week. Well, yeah, you know, so it won't be that long. I know you guys have been asking for it. It's like he wrote a new one five days ago. Where is it? Like, okay, okay, we'll get it for you. Don't worry. I really enjoyed this part. This part was actually particularly good. This is probably my favorite part we've done in a while. I really enjoyed the bit with Malkador at the start. What do you guys think about that with the flame, the card lighting on fire? Yeah. I do think there is something to that with none of the Primarchs are able to be Warmaster. I don't think any of them are capable of it. Okay, I know a lot of you guys are going to be mm, and laugh at me, but I do think maybe Goleman could be Warmaster. But that's a big task to ask for anyone, and why not isn't the Emperor just be War Master and say, you know what, this Webway project's really cool and all, but we'll leave that till we're done doing the fucking job mm. before I set up the fucking intergalactic super nice railway system, mm. essentially. So what do you guys think? What are we gonna what are we gonna do about this? Do you think Anon's gonna be War Master? Possibly. I don't know. I have no idea the way this story is going to go. Yeah. I have no idea. But write your thoughts down below what you think is going to happen, what you think about the beginning of this story with the flame and the cards. Mm, that was very. That was a good twist. I yeah. really enjoyed that. But look, you guys know how it is. Check out the links. Monks, Check out the app. Subscribe. Fucking subscribe. Get that notification bell so you know and when you, the next part yes. is going to be. Look, we upload most days a week. We normally upload about, what, like five videos a week? Like five videos we a week. We normally yes, do five so. videos a week. Normally about um, 10, 11 p.m. GMT time. Yeah. So, you know, it's good for everyone. Check out the I website. Think. Check out all the models. You know how it is you at know this how it point. Is. Um, helps us out a lot, but see you guys later. Bye.